Hi guys, it's Hannah and today I'm here to talk about Fire and Blood uh, of George R. R. Martin which came out on 28th of November 2018 and it is a sort of prequel to Game of Thrones series. And before I go into review I just want to say that I'm a big fan of Game of Thrones. I did uh, not like the last book, the fifth one and actually even the fourth one, but the first three. So my history with Game of Thrones is that I watched the first three seasons first and then I went into the books and yet after, I think it was the fourth season because Joffrey was dead by then and after that I went into the books and the first three books I consumed within days. I couldn't put them down, they were so so good but then unfortunately the fourth one was really really horrible and actually as a matter of fact the TV shows skipped that book completely went to the fifth one and then only later when they didn't have that much material they came back to the fourth one uh, but till the fourth book uh, they were really following the plot of the book and that's where the mess came uh, and I totally understand why because the fourth one is absolutely horrible and the fifth one becomes really annoying it's the book where you start to not like the Daenerys uh, pretty much everybody and it's also the book which finishes with Jon Snow dying and we all know how um, everything else like the TV show shows it later. I also am not a fan of TV show anymore to be honest. Last two seasons were really horrible in my opinion and I just I didn't like with the last one I didn't even care for it. I watched uh, the whole uh, season uh, later, I think quite a few months after, I just didn't really care. Even though I do consider myself a big fan of Game of Thrones, but I do think that both books and TV shows are going really downhill and that's really disappointing for me. So if George Martin decided ever to go back, uh, what he wrote, the way he wrote in the first three books and as well the TV show first four seasons, it was so great, it was so great and I really missed that time. Anyway, so because I have read all the books, watched the TV show, I'm quite aware of all the characters and the stories and also even the like hypothesis of the fans and all that. I kind of decided to go into the Fire and Blood even though it is a prehistory but again it's a Targaryen prehistory so it's like 300 years before the rule of Targaryens, how they became the rulers, how the king's land landing was created and all that. And I, at, at first I was really excited when I started this book. Let me just say this is over 700 pages book so it's a pretty big one. It sticks to the other books of George Martin. Obviously they're all really big and I really loved it in the beginning. Yeah, the keyword is in the beginning. Because in the beginning it's um, how the Targaryens came to King's Landing actually. They named it King's Landing, how they fought the Starks, the Baratheons and how they were stuck fighting Dorne and how Dorne just like took totally different turn and then they couldn't take Dorne so uh, literally they just um, signed the peace in a way. How the first Targaryen King was actually married to, to his sisters and we do know that Targaryens tend to marry within the family and yeah that was like pretty familiar. We also had a lot of familiar names like as I said Bar Baratheons, uh, Starks, uh, Lannisters, all these and it's just in general going back in that world but that we are so familiar with all these locations and everything even though these characters themselves we never met them before but it's still like it feels really nice to be back in that familiar world that we so well know and it feels like it doesn't feel like fantasy in a way it feels like something real and therefore I was really happy and the first generation actually quite few first generations were really interesting unfortunately after that it went really downhill and for me it was the main thing the main problem that it was very repetitive it's basically the idea of this book is that you take many many generations you basically um this book could have been in made into really nice um like sort of fan thing uh, for like for fans of the Game of Thrones companion thing where you have this like family trees all of that who was who and you could have like a little descriptions to them you know like this one was really pretty this one was crazy this one took over his brother's th throne and split somebody's th throat you know this one was also crazy like this was a jealous you know like this kind of like little description I think would have been much more interesting but unfortunately this is exactly what this book is about it literally takes every generation and talks about the children, about the wives, about the aunts, about the uncles and all that and how 
one of them suddenly becomes the ruler, how who marries who, you know, and if it was a real history, it might have been interesting for at least 10, 20 generations, but now that it's, I don't know, at this point you really feel it's fictional, because you really detach yourself, it doesn't make any sense after a while. So in the beginning it really was fun to read it, I think it was way too long and I just, even as a fan of Game of Thrones, I don't see this as a good thing, like a good book. I would not recommend it to anybody. I would say read a few chapters and you're going to be good with it because the rest is just pure repetition. Because how many times you can say he married his sister, Septon didn't approve, he married her anyway, had two children, one of them was weak, other one was like strong, became a king, that married another sister, let's say, or like, you know, it's very, very repetitive. I mean, you can't think that much of it. I mean, they all either pretty or crazy or... I don't know, there were some weird things in general happening where like, like kissing game is a very popular thing throughout this book. Apparently all the girls want to try kissing games and all that. It's just, I don't know, there's so much repetition that sometimes I caught my, because I was listening to the audiobook of this one, I caught myself uh, on my way to work listening to it and just losing my attention. So then I wouldn't go back uh, like an hour or so and listen to it again because I totally black out on that part. I was like, I was not accepting information anymore because it was so, so boring. And even though Game of Thrones, uh, the original series, feels very alive, very real, and all the politics and everything here, it was just like somebody was reading like family trees to you, to giving a little bit of description on it, but it wasn't good. I think it time was kind of wasted on this book that could have been used for, you know, writing a next book in a Game of Thrones series, uh, or Ice and Fire series, if you prefer calling that name. Um, but yeah, I just don't think it was a good thing. Even, again, as a Game of Thrones fan, I wanted to love this one so, so much, like so, so much. And it was really sad because, again, in the beginning, I felt really nice reading it. I was like pumped, you know, oh, this is so good going back in that world, you know, all the Tongarians, so cool. And yeah, it wasn't that. So I give this one actually only two out of five stars. Again, we back in a world, some interesting stories, but in the end, how many times you can listen about the same thing happening again and again, just the fair names. Don't ask me the names because there were so many and I did not care to remember any. I just, I don't know. I just, it just doesn't feel like a good book, you know, like worth really spending your money because this is obviously overpriced because it's still considered part of Game of Thrones and I don't think you should be spending your money on this one. I think if you want to try it, take it from the library. I mean, majority of libraries have this one, both audiobook and the physical copy. Just do that. I don't think it's worth spending 20 to $30 on this book. I really don't. Uh, so yeah, that is my take on Fire and Blood. Let me know if you read this one, if you're planning to read it, and what are your thoughts in general. And yeah, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye!